My name is Michael Anthony. For many years, I was executive secretary to the late multi-billionaire John Bearsford Tipton. Among my duties was the unique job of delivering one million dollars, which Mr. Tipton frequently gave away tax-free to a total stranger. From his fabulous 60,000-acre estate, Silverstone, Mr. Tipton carried on his study of human nature. Every subject in his vast store of knowledge was material for close analysis and was always related to the behavior and destiny of man. You sent for me, sir? Mike, I'm doing my bird watching the easy way. Only it does look more comfortable than crouching in the underbrush or crawling through a swamp. Much more comfortable, Mike, but as you can see, I'm limited to pigeons. But you are enjoying yourself, sir. Yes, pigeons are very enjoyable and very trusting. That's probably why the name pigeon comes to be applied to certain people. You mean people who are easily fooled? That's right, Mike. Our uh, next millionaire. This is... Gilbert Burton was a country boy who had just come to the big city to make his fortune. He was willing to start at the bottom. And that's just about what he did. Stretching like that, Gil, you're going to get a neck like a giraffe. Hey, she sure is great. Is uh, Maurice really her brother? Yep. Seems like a nice fella. Say, Gil, do me a favor, will you? Uh, take this into her dressing room. She usually likes coffee between shows. Can you take it into uh, Miss Carter? Yeah, yeah. Look, I've got a busy table. Oh, well, wait a minute, Max. But... He asked me to bring the coffee. Thanks. Take cream or sugar? No, just black. I, uh, I work in the kitchen. I'm a dishwasher. Oh, well, I appreciate you taking the time to... Oh, look out. Oh, I'm sorry. So watch what I was doing. Well, no, I'm oh. not... Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that would make a good bit for a keystone comedy. Oh. Say, so, you know, you're, you're just as nice as I thought you'd be. Thank you. I, uh, I watch you every night through the kitchen doors, dancing. You and Maurice. You're terrific dancers, especially you. Oh? I mean, I'm no professional critic, but I've seen a lot of dancers on television aren't half as good as you. Well, I must tell that to my agent. Well, it sure was nice getting to meet you. I, uh, I better be getting back to the kitchen. Well, thanks for the coffee. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Nice. Well, I gotta get on with my dishwasher. With this gift, you'll never have to worry about dishwashing. Say, if it's a uh, soap powder you're selling, you'll have to speak to the boss. I'm not selling anything, sir. I have something that I'm going to give you. A cashier's check for one million dollars, tax-free. You mean that's 
real? It's real. And you're giving it to me? Well, why? Who? It's not from me personally. The donor must remain anonymous. Now, all you have to do... Hey, wait a minute. Who do I have to kill? All you have to do is sign this document. It pledges you never to reveal the amount of this gift or the manner in which you received it, except to your wife, if you should marry. If you do tell, the money will be forfeited. Boy, that's funny. I come to the city to make my fortune. I expect to work hard for it. All of a sudden, boom, drops right in my lap. That is, if I don't wake up and find my head under a pile of dirty dishes. Well, it's not a dream, I assure you. Uh, uh, well, I guess I'm awake. Well, thanks, Mr. Anthony. Thanks a lot. You're quite welcome. Goodbye and good luck, Mr. Burton. Yeah. Good luck. if you will join me at my table. Gilbert Burton. Who's Gilbert Burton? I don't know. From the looks of those, he has plenty of what it takes. The point is, he admires us. Well, let's go out and admire him back. He wants to drink champagne out of my slipper, so I see. Oh, Max. Seems that someone with uh, perception and superb taste would like us to join him. Uh, Mr. Gilbert Burton. Ah, yes. Mr. Burton is expecting you to. Will you follow me, please? Mr. Burton, Margot and Maurice Carter. Margot and Maurice, Mr. Gilbert Burton. Oh, thank you. I hoped you'd come. It was nice of you to ask us. Flowers, but love. Well, I'm glad you like them. Uh, would you like some French champagne? We'd love some uh, French champagne. Max? You come here often, Mr. Burton? Oh, I, I've uh, been here before. I've seen you dance several times. I think you're terrific. Thank you. I've, uh, I've always wanted to meet you formally. Well, don't be formal. We enjoy meeting people. The dishwasher. What? <laughs> That's right, Miss Carter. Up till last night, I worked back there in the kitchen as a dishwasher. <laughs> Did you lose an election bet? No, that's the way I made my living. But I, uh, I suddenly came in some money, quite a bit of money. Well, congratulations. And many happy returns. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm glad you remembered me, Miss Carter. I hope you'll forget how clumsy I was the other night. I brought your sister a cup of coffee. Now, that sounds like a perfectly simple thing to do, doesn't it? Well, not for Gilbert. It was all thumbs, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Rags to riches. How do you like that? One night he's loaded with dishes, and the next, well, from what he says, he's really loaded now. But it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Hey, if I don't watch out, the building might change to Margot and Gilbert. Oh, with my big feet, you've got nothing to worry about. Don't be so modest. You're good. Well, for a country boy. <laughs> Some of our most famous people were once country boys. Well, I'm afraid the hay is still sticking up from behind my ears. I, uh, I got a lot to learn about city living. Oh, that's not so difficult. Say, you said your engagement in Chicago isn't for two weeks. Well, I, I hope you don't think I'm too forward, but why couldn't you spend those two weeks kind of giving me a guided tour, showing me the right places to go, how to act? Oh, you are doing all right? Well, I don't really know my way around. Besides, uh, well, I'd like to see more of you. Well, now that I got a little money, I'd like to see some things before I settle down. What do you say? We'd have a ball. But you really think we could be of any help? Well, of course you could. What do you say, Maggie? Maggie? Yeah, Maggie and Mike. 
Well, Margot and Maurice looks better on a billboard. <laughs> Mike and Maggie. You want to know something? I like that much better. <laughs> Winning all this on your money. Oh, forget it, Mike. <laughs> you know, I'm glad Mike couldn't come along tonight. Well, as I like him, I like him a lot, but I wanted a chance to tell you how much I like you before you take off for Chicago. Well, you could have told me that was my brother around. But we're not going now. They're holding over the act they got. Hey, that's great. Oh, I, I mean, that's too bad. No, it's wonderful. <laughs> Now I can keep on seeing you. That was the original idea, you know. <laughs> you know, it's only been two weeks, but doggone it, Maggie, I feel as if I'd known you all my life. I feel so... so comfortable with you. Comfortable? Well, what I mean is, uh... Well, I love you, that's what I mean. I guess I've loved you from the moment I saw you through the kitchen doors. Oh. Being with you, I feel as if I could stand this town on its ear. Oh, wait a minute, I almost forgot. Just to show how I feel about you. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, Gil. Well, you can really thank Mike for it. A friend of his bought it for his girl, but she threw him over before he had a chance to show it to her. Mike offered to help him sell it, and he just happened to show it to me. I love it, thank you. It's a wonderful world, isn't it, Maggie? His girl turned him down. And you were trying to help a friend? Yeah. I had it with me. I showed it to uh, Gil. He just left. Wanted to know how much it was. And how much was it? Well, that Gil. I have never met anyone like him. Mike, how much did he have to pay you for it? You know, I'm almost ashamed to tell you. I couldn't believe it myself when he wrote out the check. All right, hold on to your hat. $2,500. <laughs> Can you imagine that? But it couldn't be worth more than four or five hundred. I tried to reason with him. I only said twenty-five hundred is a gag. When he went for it, I naturally told him I'd get it cheaper. He wouldn't listen. Said he was going to waste time haggling over a present for you. But you could have refused to sell it to him. Oh, he'd have knocked me down and stuffed the check in my pocket. <coughs> I swear it. It's a good-looking bracelet. You uh, said so yourself. Well, I guess it's my fault as well as yours. Mike, you know, we've been using Gil as a pigeon. Pigeon? Yes. An easy mark to pay the bills and show us a good time. Oh, sis, he, he likes it this way. Oh, sure. He likes taking us to dinner and buying us theater tickets, but this is nothing more or less than a swindle. 
Oh, Maggie, that's a pretty rough thing to say. It isn't as if I deliberately set out to take him. Why, Gil got his money's worth just from the pleasure of giving you such a big present. That doesn't make any difference. You just can't do a thing like this to him. Hey, you fall for him? Oh, tonight he was on the verge of asking me to marry him. Well, that's wonderful. It'll keep it all in the family. You know, that Gil's a great guy. I really like him. And, and I could be good for him, Maggie. Yeah, yeah, he needs someone like me. Someone who knows his way around. And that's what I'm afraid of. Gil's checkbook would only be too handy for you. Oh. Well, there's only one thing I can do. What? I'm not going to see him again. Just because he gave you a pretty bracelet? Mike, where's the money? What money? You know what I mean. The 2500 Oh. Well, I had to give Harry the three. Uh, 450 and, uh... Mike. You're going to take this bracelet back to Harry, and you're going to return the money to Gilbert. Oh, Maggie, you're killing me. And that's an idea. If you don't return this, the first thing tomorrow. No, I don't understand it, Mike. Why won't she see me? Why won't she tell me what I did wrong? You know, you haven't been listening to me, Gil. I came Everything here to Everything was going so well. Oh, you know how women are. She'll change her mind again. You think so? Sure, sure. Now, let's get no, this... No, she won't. I know what it is. It's me. I'm still just the country boy living on a merry-go-round. How can a woman like Maggie respect a man who hasn't accomplished anything? Mike, I've got to start thinking about the future. The future? Yeah, sure, but maybe if I invested in some good business, made a name for myself, Maggie might change her mind. Must be plenty of opportunities. Oh, yeah. The one ads are full of... Hey, wait a minute. I might have just a thing. Look, if you found something a child would want, that his parents would be willing to buy from, you'd have something big, wouldn't you? Well, I've got a friend who's been trying to raise capital for a gimmick they can't miss. Well, you see what this guy's dreamed up. Well, he's got a brain that won't stop. He's in merchandising. He's in trucking. He, he invents all day long. Hey! What did Gil say? Oh, Maggie, I've got some terrific news. Did you return the money? Oh, baby, we've got bigger things to think about. I asked you, did you return... Listen, Gil is putting up $150,000 to finance Joe Harper. You should have seen the look on Gil's face when he saw some of those new toys Joe dreamed up. Toys? Oh, do you know what this means? With Gil behind us, we can set up our own plant, our own distributing Mike, organization. Mike! What's happening to you? You promised you'd return the money. And now you've got Gil putting $150,000 into some phony deal. Phony? No, we're setting up a legal corporation. Mike, would you put your money into it? My money? <laughs> what money? Anyhow, that isn't the point. The point is that you and Joe Harper can have a ball with Gil's money. Oh, you worry more about Gil's money than he does. It's you I'm worried about. Do you still have the money? Oh, God. What are you going to do? What you didn't do. And undo what you did do. Maggie, gosh, it's good to see you again. Well, I didn't want to come. But someone has to stop you from behaving like a country bumpkin. Well, I have stopped. Did Mike tell you the good news? Yes, Mike told me the good news. You wanted to learn all about life in the big city. You think you're getting an education, having a good time, throwing money around as though it grows on trees. No, no, Maggie, I was wrong. That's what I wanted to tell you. Well, you're just as green as when you came from the country. The hay is still sticking out from behind your ears. Didn't Mike tell you about the new business we're going into? Business? My brother has set you up as the pigeon in a phony deal that's going to cost you $150,000. Darling, that's an awful thing to say about Mike. Is it? Well, Mike sold you that bracelet for $2,000 more than it was worth. I hoped you wouldn't find out. You mean you knew? Well, you see, I took it to a jeweler to have it cleaned. He said they were nice stones. Worth a little less than I paid. Well, then I didn't want to give it to you, but... Well, I thought if Mike knew that I knew, he might be embarrassed. 
And since you didn't know, well, I, I didn't want to make a fuss and maybe lose you. What about the deal with Joe Harper? That was the answer. Cleared up everything. Oh, that Joe and his ideas, I tell you, he's... He's got a head like a gold mine. <laughs> well, then how come Joe couldn't get the money before to back up all those wonderful ideas? Well, I guess most people want a sure thing, but I'm willing to take a chance. But it'll cost you a fortune. Well, so can any new business. Look, this is one of Joe's ideas. Look at this. You know, the fellas that invented the hula hoop made a fortune. Now, this doll whirls the hoop. Does it? It works. Believe me, it works. All it takes is capital and salesmanship, money and Mike. And Mike needs a challenge like this. And why should you worry about Mike? Well, I like him. I can be good for him. He, he needs somebody like me to show him around. Why shouldn't I worry about my future brother-in-law? Brother-in-law? Besides, it uh, keeps everything in the family. That is, uh, if you'll take me into the family. Well, you understand, I'm only doing this to get a good brother-in-law for Mike. Well, I couldn't think of a better reason. Seems that someone with uh, perception and superb taste would like us to join him. Uh, Mr. Gilbert Burton. Ah, yes. Mr. Burton is expecting you to. Will you follow me, please? Mr. Burton, Margot and Maurice Carter. Margot and Maurice, Mr. Gilbert Burton. Oh, thank you. I hoped you'd come. It was nice of you to ask us. Flowers, my love. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Uh, would you like some French champagne? We'd love some uh, French champagne. Max? You come here often, Mr. Burton? Oh, I, I've uh, been here before. I've seen you dance several times. I think you're terrific. Thank you. I've, uh, I've always wanted to meet you formally. Well, don't be formal. We enjoy meeting people. The dishwasher. What? That's right, Miss Carter. Up till last night, I worked back there in the kitchen as a dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> Did you lose an election bet? No, that's the way I made my living. <laughs> but I, uh, I suddenly came in some money, quite a bit of money. Well, congratulations. And many happy returns. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm glad you remembered me, Miss Carter. I hope you'll forget how clumsy I was the other night. I brought your sister a cup of coffee. Now, that sounds like a perfectly simple thing to do, doesn't it? Well, not for Gil Burton. It was all thumbs, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Rags to riches. How do you like that? One night, he's loaded with dishes and the next...
keep stretching like that, Gil, you're going to get a neck like a giraffe. Hey, she sure is great. Is uh, Maurice really her brother? Yep. Seems like a nice fella. Say, Gil, do me a favor, will you? Uh, take this into her dressing room. She usually likes coffee between shows. You take it into Miss Carter? Yeah, yeah. Look, I've got a busy table. Oh, wait a minute, Max. Well... He asked me to bring the coffee. Thanks. Take cream or sugar? No, just black. I, uh, I work in the kitchen. I'm a dishwasher. Oh, well, I appreciate you taking the time to... Oh, look out. Oh, I'm sorry. So watch what I was doing. Well, no harm done. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that would make a good bit for a keystone comedy. Oh. Say, you know, you're, you're just as nice as I thought you'd be. Thank you. I, uh, I watch you every night through the kitchen doors, dancing. You and Maurice. You're terrific dancers, especially you. Oh? I mean, I'm no professional critic, but I've seen a lot of dancers on television aren't half as good as you. Well, I must tell that to my agent. Well, it sure was nice getting to meet you. I, uh, I'd better be getting back to the kitchen. Well, thanks for the coffee. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> gift for you, Mr. Burton. Well, oh, that's nice. Sir. Well, I gotta get on with my dishwasher. With this gift, you'll never have to worry about dishwashing. Say, if it's a soap powder you're selling, you'll have to speak to the boss. I'm not selling anything, sir. I have something that I'm going to give you. A cashier's check for one million dollars, tax-free. You mean that's real? It's real. And you're giving it to me? Well, why? Who? It's not from me personally. The donor must remain anonymous. Now, all you have to do... Hey, wait a minute. Who do I have to kill? All you have to do is... My name is Michael Anthony. For many years, I was executive secretary to the late multi-billionaire John Beresford Tipton. Among my duties was the unique job of delivering one million dollars, which Mr. Tipton frequently gave away tax-free to a total stranger. From his fabulous 60,000-acre estate, Silverstone, Mr. Tipton carried on his study of human nature. Every subject in his vast store of knowledge was material for close analysis and was always related to the behavior and destiny of man. You sent for me, sir? Mike, I'm doing my bird watching the easy way. Only it does look more comfortable than crouching in the underbrush or crawling through a swamp. Much more comfortable, Mike, but as you can see, I'm limited to pigeons. But you are enjoying yourself, sir. Yes, pigeons are very enjoyable and very trusting. That's probably why the name pigeon comes to be applied to certain people. You mean people who are easily fooled? That's right, Mike. Our uh, next millionaire. This is... Gilbert Burton was a country boy who had just come to the big city to make his fortune. He was willing to start at the bottom, and that's just about what he did. 
sign this document. It pledges you never to reveal the amount of this gift or the manner in which you received it, except to your wife, if you should marry. If you do tell, the money will be forfeited. Boy, that's funny. I come to the city to make my fortune. I expect to work hard for it. All of a sudden, boom, drops right in my lap. That is, if I don't wake up and find my head under a pile of dirty dishes. Well, it's not a dream, I assure you. Uh, uh, well, I guess I'm awake. Oh. Well, thanks, Mr. Anthony. Thanks a lot. You're quite welcome. Goodbye and good luck, Mr. Burton. Yeah. Good luck. I would be honored if you will join me at my table. Gilbert Burton. Who's Gilbert Burton? I don't know. From the looks of those, he has plenty of what it takes. The point is, he admires us. Well, let's go out and admire him back. He wants to drink champagne out of my slipper and all right, please. 